The Galaxy S24 series is out, and there is a lot about these cameras that you need to know. This video, we're going to take a look at every single camera feature that you can find on the Galaxy S24 series. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech With Benefits. It's been about a year since I uploaded my first video now, so happy anniversary to me on YouTube. And part of that first generation of videos that I made was how to use every Galaxy S23 camera feature. I wouldn't think I'd need to update it because the S23 was stacked full of camera features, but Samsung have changed a lot and made some new features that I think this video needs to be made because I'm gonna show you not just how to take a photo, not just the new camera modes, every single camera feature and how to use it. We're gonna start with the, the settings menu and I guess the best configuration of the settings that you should have, then sort of dive into the everything to do with photos, every photo mode, what settings to toggle on, what how to use every setting, getting the most from those features, and then looking at video as well. We'll finish off with selfies, uh, just because most of what's covered in the normal part of the phone will be covered for selfies anyway. So we'll just finish off with a few selfie specific stuff at the end. I will put chapters in so you can kind of dive between the different modes that you're interested in. But honestly, if you've just picked up this phone and you want to know everything to do with the camera, watch it in full. Where possible, I'll break down what's different between ultra and normal base and plus model because there is some differences there in camera mode offerings and function offerings too. But let's dive into the settings and tell you what you should be turning on. Access the settings of the camera. When you're in the camera itself, you just hit the little cogwheel at the top left corner, and this will dive into settings. Now there's different sort of menus that will appear depending on what camera mode you're in. They'll all be there, but some won't be accessible because they're not available for that mode that you're in. But that's not really the point of what I'm trying to show you. First thing I reckon you should be turning on is shot suggestions. Go in here and turn this on because what shot suggestions will do is utilizing AI will kind of help guide and frame up your photo. It'll give you a little horizon line and it'll also give you a little circle to position where your photo should be taken from. In conjunction with this, I would go into the and also turn on grid lines because this will enable that horizon line feature across every other camera mode except for panorama on your phone. So if you're taking a video, for example, you have this horizon line guiding you about how to keep this footage stable. Further to here as well, I'll go into the intelligent options and turn on scene optimizer and set the quality to maximum. Reason for this is maximum will ensure you're getting the best quality when it comes to HDR and contrast and processing. And scene optimizer, that's also going to give you some extra processing that Samsung will determine based on the scene that you're taking a photo of. Whether it be at the beach, whether it be at home, it's gonna determine the best colors and best things to process for that image. So turn that on. Next thing is more of a video setting. I would go in here and toggle auto frame rate or auto FPS to your liking. So whether that be for 30 frame rate, 30 FPS only, or whether it be for 30 and 60, basically the way this function works is when the phone determines it, it will drop the frame rate to a certain level to allow more light to come in. So this is really only useful for lower light situations, but if you are adamant that you want to fix it at 60 frames per second and not drop below that, then turn it on for 30 only. Anyway, that's where the setting is, and that's how it works. Tying into that too, there's advanced video options. This is all about options to do with what codec to save your video in, whether you want it to be a high efficiency video codec, or whether you want it to be the most compatible, you can go in here and turn that on. And there's some other stuff here around audio when it comes to like 360 audio, but that's more to do with buds. And zoom in mic, turn that on. That's a great feature. That works by when you're zooming in through video, it'll also zoom in your microphone and amplify noise from further away. It's genius. There's also a settings to keep menu option in here. This is simply something that you can just toggle on the settings you'd like to keep every time you open up your camera, whether that be keeping it in high resolution mode, whether that be keeping it in the portrait zoom that you've isolated. So if you're going to 5X, for example, with the ultra, you can keep it at 5X every time you launch portrait mode. And the last one to do with settings, it's not here when you first get your phone, you need to go into the Galaxy Store and download it, but it's Camera Assistant. Camera Assistant is exceptional. It's basically a, some extra functions and toggles that you can enable to customize your usage of your camera. The way I like to use this is uh, in the zoom options, you have the extra crops and shortcuts 
that you can enable with the s24 and s24 plus it's just the two times crop with the ultra you get the two the 10 and the 100 that you can turn on for down the bottom go in here and, and turn that on for sure there's some other camera assistant settings that i absolutely recommend turning on going in here and making sure auto hdr is turned on going in here and making sure it's prioritized cap uh, focus over speed that definitely should be set to prioritize focus over speed, not speed over focus, because that will give you the best version of the photo you can get. There's also one in here too regarding high resolution. I wouldn't worry too much about this, but effectively it'll just upscale digital high resolution zoom to that higher resolution. So if you're cropping in from 200 megapixels at that resolution, it'll upscale it back to 200 megapixel, even if it's been zoomed in on. Again, it's not important, but it's in there. Okay, you've got your settings turned on. Now let's learn how to take photos with all the various photo modes that Samsung have got, because there's a lot. Starting with just the standard photo mode, it looks quite simple. Samsung have simplified the UI, but there's a lot here. Starting with all the zoom options, with the S24 Ultra, you can go from 0 0.6 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 5 to 10 to 100. There's a lot of options. The S24 and S24 Plus are a little bit more limited. They go 0 0.6, 1, 2, and 3, and then you have to use the other toggles down below to zoom in further. With the S24 Ultra, you get the option of macro photography. Using a feature called Focus Enhancer, it will automatically switch to the ultra wide camera when it is deemed to be too close to a subject and this ultra wide camera has a really close focusing distance because it utilizes the laser autofocus module and the dual pixel autofocus together to get you in nice and close you can of course toggle this off you'll see it appear in the bottom left corner or if you definitely just want macro photography switch to the ultra wide camera and get in really close to something and you'll be able to capture some exceptionally detailed photos from really really close other parts to the photo mode sort of jumping up to the top you'll see that there's a little play button in the far right corner that's called motion photo motion photo is samsung's sort of way of capturing footage before you take your photo and then playing your little clip of it afterwards it's really clever they've definitely improved motion photo this year like a lot you toggle this on and once you've taken the photo you'll see the view motion photo appear in the gallery what you can do from here is a couple of things one you can obviously watch it back and then you can hit the little screenshot button to capture any sort of screen or frame from that three seconds to save as a separate photo. But Samsung have improved it now so you don't just have to save it as a screenshot, they will upscale it for you. If you actually go into the edit part of a motion photo, there's a little button in the far right corner that allows you to scrub through and set any part of the photo as the starting point and then it'll upscale it to 14 megapixel. It's really clever and takes advantage of Samsung's AI to sort of digitally upscale something. What you can also do is long exposure. So if you're on a motion photo and you swipe up, it doesn't really matter what photo it is. Obviously some examples will work better than others like moving cars, for example, but you can hit long exposure and Samsung again using AI will turn that three seconds of footage into like a motion long exposure photo. It'll save it in that long exposure look, but then it'll also play it back to you in that way as well. Again, clever but it's all part of the photo mode. Samsung have made it easier at the top to be able to toggle to different resolutions. They split it from aspect ratio. So before you used to have to change resolution and the aspect ratio at the top, but now you can have it split. So if you go to the top and hit the number, it'll give you the option of 50 or 200, or it'll toggle just between 12 and 50 on the base models. Then you can also then change the aspect ratio alongside that. Four by three is the best. Don't use any other aspect ratio. It won't actually give you more in the photo. It's just cropping into a different part of the sensor. Trust me. Alongside the top there as well, you have the flash, which you can toggle on either auto or manually. And there's also a whole bunch of filters that you can preset over your photo before you take it. You probably won't use the filters as much, but they're there as an option if should you need them. There's also the timer that you can set. Uh, honestly, the S24 Ultra has the S Pen, which uh, we'll talk about in another video because the S Pen is like the single greatest tool for photography. But I'm going to make a video about how to use the Ultra's S Pen. So subscribe for that. Okay, moving on, you have portrait mode. Portrait mode is down the bottom by default. So you just have to swipe to the right and it brings it up. The first thing you'll notice with portrait mode is Samsung have got zoom options, both in the S24 and the S24 Ultra. You've got one, two, and three in the base models, and then a 5X zoom option in the Ultra. All of them really good at taking portrait shot photos. The Ultra with its 5X is phenomenal. What you've got here with portrait mode is the option to set the background style before you take the photo. 
So using the little toggle in the bottom right corner, you can cycle between different background options and effects that you can visualize and see before you snap it. You can also adjust the strength of that effect, whether that be blur or studio, or whether that be the monotone one. There's a way of making it stronger or weaker depending on how you like it. The beauty of this is despite all the different ones that you see down the bottom, once you've captured it, you can actually go back into the photo later and adjust it if you didn't like it. So you could go back and see that you actually preferred the black and white option and it's called color point this one. And you could go back and change it to that. And then you can also duplicate that photo and then save several versions of it if you wanted to have multiple different backgrounds. It's really neat. And the way you do it is you just swipe up as you saw and hit the background effect and you have the same menu as you did before you took the photo to change between. It's great. And honestly, there's some really good ones in there. Studio lighting is great because it helps brighten up your face from different angles. Angles. And then the other ones are all kind of clever and a bit of fun. So go nuts in there. Now this is all Samsung gives you in the bottom for photos. So you have to go into the more tab to see more, as you can imagine. You can move stuff down from the more tab into the bottom. And the one first one that I will move down out of here is single take. The best Samsung camera feature, hands down on any smartphone, not just Samsung even, on any camera feature on any phone you'll find, this is the best one. I did a full video on last year's version of single take, but Samsung have made it better. So I might even isolate another video on it. But for now, for this video, the way single take works is it uses uh, AI to record 10 to 15 seconds of video, depending on how long you want it to take. Once you start it, you hit the plus button and it'll extend it even longer. And then after the footage has been captured, it uses processing and algorithms to spit out an album full of photos and videos. Sensational. And with the zoom options now, Samsung is giving you the option to sort of sit where you are and zoom in further. With the S24 Ultra, you can go all the way to 10 times. With the plus and the base, you can only go up to three. But that flexibility is still great because you can choose any of these cameras, hit start, and it'll capture that footage from a distance and give you some really great results. I captured my favorite photo of my son using the S24 Ultra uh, with its single take mode at 5x zoom. So using this mode and sort of seeing the results that it gives you, once you go into the album, it gives you like a best shot, it gives you like a little boomerang, it gives you photos, it gives you sort of highlight reels, it puts it to music, it's amazing. And then you can save one photo and delete the rest. You can save them all and keep them in the album. It's all there and it's really beneficial, especially if you've got kids and pets. Dragging another one out of the more tab is night mode. Night mode hasn't changed much, to be honest. The only real thing you notice that's different is the horizon lines been input once you've got the grid lines turned on and Samsung have got all the zoom options down there. So night mode works by selecting the camera that you want to take a photo of, down the bottom right corner, it shows you how long it's going to capture photos for. So it'll snap photos sort of over the course of that time frame and then stack them together. You can set it to be maximum or leave it determined by the phone. Up to you. You can also use night mode on a tripod, which will infinitely improve the results because it keeps it stable. So you've got two options, handheld and on a tripod. Either way, it works the same. The only difference with tripod is you get more time. It'll capture over a longer period of time versus handheld. So if you happen to have a tripod with you, take advantage of it because it does a really good job. Again, in the more tab, we've got pro mode. Pro mode is like your advanced controls to take photos with. Samsung have basically replicated the main photo mode, but down the bottom have put all the manual toggles that you could want. At the top, you're limited to 50 megapixels. Samsung has not enabled 200 megapixel on the ultra, which is fine. It means there's some parity across the models, except for the fact you have the the higher zoom range here. You can go the 5X versus just three on the S24 and S24 Plus. The thing with this though, is you can save raw copies. So in the settings for pro mode, you can save both JPEG and raw. And the raw copy is just great for post editing. So it'll capture all the raw data without any processing and give you the option to sort of manipulate it to your liking. But all the controls are down the bottom. I'm not much of a photographer in that sense myself but I do know enough. So I know that you can tweak things like the ISO, you can tweak things like the shutter speed, you can tweak the focus and sort of the peaking of focus. That's sort of something you can control as well. It's all really neat and it's all sort of inbuilt into pro mode. Panorama hasn't really changed much since last year, to be honest. You still have the two camera options, the ultra wide and the wide angle, and it still operates the same. You can still do it this way or this way and it'll stack and merge all the photos together. 
So you can use this one. It's quite neat in how it stitches it all together. It gives you sort of like a guide to sort of follow along. And there's some really clever things lots of people can do with Panorama. It's just not one I find myself using a lot. But if you want to know how to use it, effectively switch to Panorama, select your camera, and then follow the on-screen guides, and then watch it do its magic once you've actually looked at the photo afterwards. And the last inbuilt photo mode into camera is food mode. Again, not much has changed since last year. Samsung have given you all of the same flexibility and controls from all the cameras that you can use. And you've also got the toggle to turn on the blur effect if you want to. That blur effect will basically just highlight the plate of food that you're taking a photo of and kind of create this bokeh effect around it. It sort of helps boost what the food will look like, but food mode already does that with its processing. So you might not need that blur effect to accentuate it. But you've also got the option to change the color temperature. So if you want to have it warmer, a bit cooler, you can go in there and sort of adjust it before you take the photo. It's like a pro mode for food, effectively, but yeah, called food mode. There is another photo mode in here, Expert Raw, but that is going to be a dedicated video on its own because that mode has changed a lot since last year. Okay, video time. This is where I think you will find the most amount of features possible and probably need the most guidance on because there is so much video features in here that is worth discussing. In standard video mode, you have a plethora of flexibility. You've got not only the resolutions that go all the way down from HD all the way up to 8K at 30 FPS, mind you, but you've also got the flexibility of what to do with those resolutions. So for 8K, you now have the 5X camera on the Ultra to take videos with. And you can also record 4K60 whilst changing lenses whilst recording. The Plus and the base model don't have that option. So that's something you might want to consider if you haven't bought the phone yet. If you have the Ultra, take advantage of it because it's very smooth switching between all the lenses as you can see here. You of course get all the zoom options when recording uh, just in 4K uh, resolution, which is great. But Samsung have also enabled that focus enhancer from photos I was speaking about before so you can sort of get macro video, which I think is kind of clever. But within video mode, it's more than just resolution and zoom. Samsung have got some extra toggles here to make some different changes to the content you're capturing. First one's super steady. At the top, you see this little action man running. Super steady, when enabled, you can toggle resolutions. So it can go all the way up to Quad HD 60 frame, frame rate per second. Why did I say it like that? Frame FPS, that's definitely better. And what this will do is give you smooth and stable footage at the same time. Because action sort of shots are never still, you're always on the move. So you want that 60 FPS to match it. 30 is fine. You'll probably get the better results out of it from a like output processing level. But 60 is just there for that extra bit of speed. But up to you. You turn it on. You can select the camera you want Super Steady to record from. And then follow the subject sort of at speed however you like. And it's quite astounding the stability that it gives you. When compared to 4K30 stability, 4K30 is still quite good. So you might not need the, quad, the Super Steady. But it's there as an option. And definitely does work in the right scenario. The other option that's down the bottom of the video mode in the corner of the frame is auto framing. Auto framing is sensational. I tested it in the backyard with the kids the other day and what I was able to find was it's so good at recognizing subjects and now that it can go up to 4k 30 you toggle that at the top there you can go full HD or 4k why would you do full HD you can go into something and get so much better footage from this. You've got three cameras to choose from as well, the ultra wide, the 1X, and a cropped in 2X version. And all three of them with that 4K resolution give you exceptional level of quality and follow things around the room really nicely. The good thing is the base and the plus also have the 4K 30 as well, so you're not missing out with those ones. And yeah, you can see when you turn it on and then you're following it around, it does a really good job. What you can also do is you can also tap on the subject that you want to track and then it will focus solely on that and follow it around. And because it's 4K, it's so much crisper than what it's ever been with that full HD that it was last year. It honestly makes it look like someone's following you around with the camera, even though it's just secured there on a tripod. You can use this handheld, but it does recommend for it to be stable. So probably a tripod will be the best bet. And for video, you need to head into the more tab to see everything that Samsung has on offer. First one that I would definitely recommend checking out is portrait video. With portrait video mode, you can toggle the resolution at the top. You can go 4K or just 
full HD. Again, why would you choose full HD unless you really want to save space, I guess. But what you can do now this year is you can zoom whilst recording with portrait video. Before you just had to choose the zoom option and then wait, you now have the option to go between one and three times whilst you're recording. Also, you can change the background sort of strength and effect. So there's different options with portrait video mode, similar to portrait photos. You press the little toggle, change the effect, and then you also have the option with the strength slider as well. Can't change it after that's been taken. That's a bit of a, a more tricky thing to do, but whilst it's being recorded, absolutely can change it and you can see the results. I love portrait video mode. This is actually being shot right now using S20 the Ultra's 4K portrait video. In fact, my whole channel is basically 4K portrait video from the S23 Ultra. So if you're liking what you're seeing, imagine how good this one is. Next, pro video mode. Something Samsung introduced to kind of give you a bit more control over video. I can see what Samsung are trying to do with this mode. They definitely allow for more control over things like frame rate. Like you have 24 FPS in here and you have 4K 120 on the S24 Ultra, not on the base models. So you have more control from that sense, more ch more selection, and you also can control the same manual controls as you can in pro photo mode. The additions you have here in pro video mode are the audio control. What I really like with pro video mode is uh, the Bluetooth plus onboard microphone gives you a really good option. Uh, I'll cut to that now because I have tested that. Let me know what you think. First thing to sort of note is that right here, you can see the levels of the recording that you can control. So it shows you how loud you're being. But to control the actual microphones you're recording from, you hit the mic button. Now there's a whole list of things that you can see here. Right now it's Omni. So that's using both the rear and the front microphones to record my voice. But let's say for example, you hit front, that's just going to record the front. But the thing is, if you want to isolate from the rear, you tap on rear and right now as you can hear me you can't really hear me that well until I sort of turn the microphone around and you can't see me but you can definitely hear me a lot better also as well if we chuck it back to Omni you can see there's a bit of a gain control here so I can make it go a little bit louder if I want to and also make it go a little bit quieter should I need to as well the last one you'll see here is blue now I've got my buds in, so right now this is actually what my audio sounds like for my buds 2 Pro. Uh, and then also you can add to that Bluetooth mix. mix actually will use a combination of the onboard microphones and also the Bluetooth headphones as well. And uh, that is what is going to control the audio. When you hit record, you are stuck with the option that you've chosen. So as you can see, you can't switch any of the other ones whilst you're actually recording. Say something, Alberto. Hello! There you yeah. go, so that's picking up nice and loud the onboard mics as well as my Bluetooth. So that's probably a good one to capture the environment as well as your voice on top of that. So that's your pro video mode and that is your pro video mode audio controls that you have available. Probably my favorite part of the pro video mode is the bokeh control slider. I really like it. It creates a really nice sort of uh, drama about it, especially when you're taking, or cinematic feel is probably the word I'm looking for, when you're taking videos of things. And you can see that here in the example that's being shown now, the ability to sort of control the sort of in and out sort of depth effect is really nice. One thing I forgot to mention with video is Samsung have got 360 audio. I did actually mention it in the settings, but I really wanted to demonstrate it because using Buds 2 Pro, you can have 360 audio recording. And it sounds really good. Take a listen. This is recording using 360 recording uh, with the Buds 2 Pro in my ear. The thing with this is I could set the phone down. And why not? I'll just point it at the ceiling and I'll walk away. The thing is, as I walk away and I'm talking, you're still going to hear a clear sound no matter the distance from the microphone. And if you compare that with not using the Bluetooth microphone and just using normal sound, when I step away from it here, I'll sort of start walking away and you probably won't be able to hear me as well. Now it's got lots of competing noise, the background, the air conditioning and so forth, but it's a very big difference when you consider the 360 microphone and the, three, the normal microphone, it's actually really well. Diving deeper into video, we have slow motion. Samsung have gotten rid of super slow-mo altogether, which I think is a bit of a shame. The way that mode worked, was clever. It sort of gave you a square or a box that when motion passed through it, it activated. That was really neat. 
and I really liked that implementation, especially as well as it was a hardware level thing that it was capturing that slow-mo speed at. Samsung in slow motion, I would say someone tried to tell me they tried to replicate it, it's not the same. I don't care what you say, it's not the same. Even though you can manually slow it down now at full HD, 240 FPS doesn't replicate what the super slow-mo was doing. Even if the end result is as slow, it's actually not the same methodology of delivering that. So it's not the same. Super slow-mo has gone in its form. Samsung seemed to have tried to allow you to replicate it through editing a 240 FPS video, but it's, it's, it's not the same. Slow motion now gives you 4K 120, and this is across all of the models as well. So you can shoot 4K 120 slow-mo, and that's kind of neat. I really like what that gives you. As you can see here, it works kind of cool and gives you a really good slow option at a good resolution. You've also got hyperlapse. Hyperlapse being pretty staple on a phone these days, or you might know it as time-lapse from other phones, but hyperlapse effectively, Samsung have stacked it full of settings. It will auto turn on night hyperlapse if it's recognizes it's low light, which I think is really neat. It's got a resolution up to 4K. You've got different lens options that you can choose as well, which I think again is just giving you options to be able to capture your sort of your content kind of neatly. You can choose the recording length so it'll stop at a certain time or it can or it can just be infinite. So it just continues to shoot. Well, again, at the top in the little toggles there. And then the speed level of how fast it's actually going to speed the footage up. It gives you sort of a recommendation for each level over what it's good at when you click on it, which I think is really cool. If you're not sure on what you want, you can see the recommendations and be like, that's actually what I'm looking for. And then it goes all the way up to the 300 times, which Samsung says and proves is great for capturing trailing light stars. The last video mode, and I've kept it till last because it's my favorite video mode Samsung I've ever made, is dual recording. Last year when I spoke about director's view, I liked it but I really found myself struggling to find a use case, particularly as it was limited to full HD, and I didn't really have a need for recording the selfie camera for myself. I can see where it might be beneficial, but not for me. Dual recording has changed the game, because when you switch to this mode, you'll see it looks like director's view from last year, but there's a twist to it. Firstly, on the Ultra, you can change resolutions to 4K 30. You can't with the S24 and S24 Plus, but I don't think that's a deal breaker for that those two phones when you consider what it actually does. The second toggle that's important here is the little down arrow. So when it's got two down arrows or two things next to each other, that's saving individual videos separately. Whereas if it's one, it's saving it as previewed. So whether that be the dual format side by side, or whether that be the little picture in picture at the top left corner, it'll save it looking like that. Whereas if you toggle it to be saving as separate videos, even though it previews that way, it's actually going to save them as two. And that's the magic of this. Because down the bottom, where you see this little cube sort of grid thing, you press it and you choose any two cameras that are on your phone to record from. So whether that be you want the selfie camera and a rear camera, that's fine, or two rear cameras. The way I've really loved to use it so far is that my son's football, I use the one, eight, one times angle and the three times. I can get in close to what he's doing but also get the wider angle picture. So, and I can preview it ever I want. So depending on which one I want to be the bigger preview, I can sort of set that in that sort of grid line area. And then once you hit record, it's capturing both. And then you just follow them around and you get the close angle and the wide angle. And then when you want to do something with it later, it saves it as that two separate files. And it'll tell you in the gallery, you'll see dual recording telephoto and dual recording wide angle. And then because it's all synced up, when you want to take it into editing, You've got all your audio and all your visuals synced on top of each other and you just cut and splice it to zoom in when you need to. It's genius. I, I'm i going to use this so much that I probably need extra storage on my phone. This is about now where I wish SD cards were still a thing. It is my new favorite camera mode and probably eclipses single take. Sorry, single take. With selfies, there's a lot of the same camera modes that I've just spoken about work with selfie mode. So I'm not going to go too deep. I'm just going to sort of speak to selfie specific things. Things like being able to have the wider angle with your selfie. So you, you can see the one or two people down the bottom. Two people, it'll automatically switch to that if it recognizes the second person in the frame. But I just think leave it on the two person anyway, because it's the full resolution of the sensor and it's capturing the better photo. So just leave it. You can actually set it to that in the settings anyway. 
So I'd just go and do that. The thing though with selfies, and I guess this is sort of photos in general, is there's some tricks up its sleeve. Selfie specific, you have something called palm selfie, which when you hold up your palm in front of the camera, it'll recognize it, do a countdown and snap the photo. I have always been a big advocate for that, even though it's been around for years. S5, I think, was the first one to bring it in. I use it all the time if I'm not using the S Pen. Especially with S Pen enabled phones, you can just use the S Pen as that remote shutter. Samsung have also got voice capture, which uh, if you say a, a series of voice commands, it'll activate the camera. Take a look. Smile. Now with the Ultra, you have a special trick up its sleeve, the S Pen. The S Pen sits in the S hole and gives you so much more control over your photos. You cannot use this S Pen on the S24 and S24 Plus. So I've compiled a screen recording of me using the S Pen. So uh, let's jump straight into that where I talk through every single S Pen feature that will be useful for you. For photos and videos, I should, I should mention for the camera. Okay, so I'm standing out here in my backyard with my trusty little S Pen. As you can see on the screen, there is the little signal to let me know that the S Pen is connected and ready to go. So the first thing you sort of will notice is if you press the button, it brings up the S Pen menu because I haven't used it yet. Okay, let's try this again. So now the S Pen is out and the logo is there letting me know that I can use it. Let's get into it. So if I press it, I'll snap a photo. There's a couple of things you can do with, you can change modes so I can swipe left and right holding the pen and it'll change to the different camera modes. And then because there's no real zoom on the back, if I do the loop, it'll actually zoom back and forth between. Now I can do this as well if I swipe up here and uh, let's take a look at the pen in action. So if I do the zooming action, you can see that the pen is doing the, the thing. And then if I go backwards, it brings it back to point 0.6. Switch back to the front. So as you can see, I swipe it up and it'll switch. For video, if I swipe across the video here, the pen can initiate recording. What you can also do though, is if you long press the pen, it'll pause it. And then if you press it again, it'll stop it. But if you want it to restart from being paused, you just hold it down again and it'll keep going. That's the main functions with the S Pen when it comes to photos and videos. There's some other really good things with it. Obviously being a remote shutter, it works really well if you've got a tripod or night mode, but that's just basically what the button does and some of the actions that you can do within the camera itself. Wow, what a journey we've been on. Lots of stuff to cover. Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about the little nooks and crannies of the cameras on your S24 series because there's a lot in here that a lot of phones can't do and will never do. So no matter what your phone that you previously had can do, the S24 Ultra can do more. And we've shown you that. Let me know which one's been your favorite camera mode that you've learned about or one that you didn't know you could do and are now loving using. Drop me a line in the comments below. If you appreciate and enjoy what I've done here, please make sure you subscribe and share this video to anyone else you think might get benefit from it. It really helps. And between now and my next video, you can always come hang out with me on my socials. I've got Twitter slash X and I'm also on Instagram. I'll see you in the next one. You!